Hey everyone, I'm Julia and in this video I'll show you how to create a login form with the help of the JetForm Builder plugin. It will be the second part of our previous tutorial on creating a register form, so if you haven't watched it, don't hesitate to check that video out. If you're new to our channel, please make sure you're subscribed and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Also, if you want us to make more and more cool and useful tutorials for you, make sure to like this video and leave your comments down below. The login form will be created in Gutenberg with the help of the jet form patterns, and then of course we will style it. I gotta say that we won't be sticking to Gutenberg, that's why at the end you'll see a couple of ways of displaying the same form both in Elementor and Gutenberg. In this tutorial, we will be using these plugins. Obviously, JetForm Builder plugin, then JetStyle Manager for styling, and as we will be creating a login form, we also need one of the pro version add-ons that is called User Login Action Add-on. User Login Action is a JetForm Builder add-on using the standard authorization method. Thanks to it, you will be able to identify registered user and allow them to log into the system. To go the extra mile, use the Remember Me capability and secure cookie function. User login is a fit-for-purpose add-on which will work smoothly for e-commerce, membership, multi-vendor directory, and other website types. Pro version add-ons can be easily installed and activated via JetForm Builder dashboard. Just go to JetForm Builder, Add-ons, and find the User Login Action add-on in the Available Add-ons section. First of all, install it and then click Activate add-on to get it ready for further work. This is pretty much it, so we can start creating our form. Go to JetForm Builder and click on Add New. And these are some default blocks here, but we don't need them right now. A login form is made of three blocks. Two text blocks, one is for the username or email, and the second one is for the password. Login button is the action button block. Also, with the help of the checkbox field block, you can add Remember Me feature. These blocks can be added manually and fully customized according to your needs, or you can use one of the JetForm patterns. So, in the previous tutorial, we used this register form pattern. And we will use it again today, although we don't need all these fields. Let's leave only email and password fields. If you don't know, Gutenberg pattern is a pre-built layout of blocks that can be used anywhere on the website. So, with the JetForm patterns, you will definitely save time and energy as creating a form can be done just in a couple of clicks. Also, we need to transform this button a bit. Just click on it. And in the field Label, type in a new label, for example, Login. Now we need to add the last thing here, Remember Me field that will add a front-end functionality that remembers user credentials and keeps the user logged in for 14 days in a row. This field works best with the checkbox field block. Once it's added, you'll see this manual input checkbox. Let's click on the Manage items and in the Added Manual Options window, fill in the label, for example, Remember Me, and as value cannot be empty, let it be, let's say, 1. And don't forget to click Update. Since Gutenberg doesn't allow you to style the blocks, you can use our JetStyle Manager plugin. Once installed, a block style button will appear in the upper right corner. Here you can style each block element separately. Although if you are not planning to use this form in Gutenberg, skip this step and move on to the next part of a video. As for the first text field email, I'm gonna start with the text input. And this is for the data that will be filled by the user. Here you can change the text size font family, 
weight and also add a padding. And this tab is optional, but I will also select solid for the border type. Border width will be 1 pixel and border radius 5 pixels. And below, you can adjust the colors for the border, text and the background. Under the next tab, Content, you can add margin and padding, change the alignment, set border and background color, and all that will be applied to the content only. The next three options are for the label itself, required mark, and description if you have any. Let's transform the label text a bit. Then change the size of the required mark and set this orange color for it. That's it. Now I will just repeat the same steps with the password field. Alright, also we need to style the checkbox field. It has more styling options including checkbox. As there are no labels, description and required mark, the only thing we need to change is the text font under the item and the size and color of the checkbox. Finally, customize the button as well and we're done. Remember, I told you about the user login action add-on. And now it's time to set it up. Quit the styling mode and proceed to the JetForm settings. First of all, in the Submit Type drop-down menu, we need to choose how the page will behave after the user hits the Submit button. Page Reload – the page will be reloaded. Ajax – the page won't be reloaded because the data will transfer without interrupting its work. Unfold the post submit actions, select user login, and click on edit. And now you need to choose the appropriate field. So in the user login field, select email, password in password, and the same thing with the last one. Remember me for Remember me field. If your website runs on the HTTPS protocol, enable whether to use secure cookie toggle for secure authorization. If you use HTTP, please ignore this option. Click Update. Please note that the login user post submit action does not imply redirecting the user to another page afterward. If you wish to add the redirect feature, make sure to set up the redirect to page action that will lead to my account page or home page. If you need any assistance with the post submit actions, you can watch our detailed video tutorial. Or you can visit Jetform Builder website, proceed to documentation, and unfold, for example, post submit actions where you will find handy guides on each action. And also, don't forget to change the messages. As it's a login form, I'm gonna change form successfully submitted into you have successfully logged in. Feel free to customize the rest of the messages. Once you're done, click publish. Now it's time to display our login form. I will show you a couple of ways and it's up to you to choose the best option for you. In Gutenberg, any form can be displayed with the help of a jet form block. You just add it and then select the form you need. Here you can also change the form settings and style it. And the second way, you can do the same thing in Elementor. Apply JetForm widget and choose what form you want to display. If you skipped styling steps in the previous part of this tutorial, you can style your form right here with the help of the JetForm widget. 
Besides, every form has its own shortcode, so it can be easily embedded with the help of the shortcode widget. Shortcodes can be found on the forms page. Just copy the shortcode of a form you want to use, then go to any Elementor page, apply the shortcode widget, and enter your form's shortcode right here. That's it. In the previous tutorial, I put a register form in a pop-up. And I think this option can also work well with a login form. So here is how it's gonna look. A pop-up with a login form will be opened once a user click on the login button. In addition, I will also put a link to a separate page with the register form. Basically, I'm gonna be repeating the same steps I did in the previous tutorial, so if you need any help with displaying a form in a pop-up, go ahead and watch it. So I created a pop-up, pulled a form using the shortcode widget, and styled the pop-up a bit. Also, I will add a link here that says, if you already have an account, click here. It will lead the user to the page with the register form. And by the way, in the Jet pop-up settings, don't forget to enable loading content with Ajax and then force loading as well. OK, and now I'm gonna open my website header. Then edit this button that says Login. Proceed to the Advanced tab and unfold the Jet pop-up section. In the attached pop-up, I will select the pop-up I just created. Trigger type will be click on the widget. That's it. Let's check the front end. And here is our login form. If you set a redirect to page action, for example to my account page, a new page will be opened once you hit the login button. And let's say if I don't have an account, I can simply click right here and it will redirect me to the page with the register form. Guys, that was it for this tutorial. If it was useful for you, smash that like button. And if you want us to make more useful tutorials, leave your comments and suggestions down below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.